Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So for those who just came in, my name is AJ. I am the Outreach Officer of DigiPaint, and this is our Basics of Procreate workshop. So we're just going to get into some of like very basic stuff, where everything is, how to make stuff, choose brushes, things like that. Um, but first of all, I wanted to ask, how many of you guys have any experience with digital art at all? Like any experience? Awesome. Cool. Sweet. Okay. And how many of you have exper any experience with procre Procreate? Cool. And how many of you are absolute beginners? Awesome. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. So this is just like, what is digital art? Obviously, you guys know that art is, or digital art is art created using software such as computers, tablets, and other electronic devices. Um, it implements traditional aspects of art, um, such as drawing, painting, 3D, stuff like that. Um, what makes digital art unique? Um, there's a difference in tools. Um, normal painting does not have things like layers or blend modes or the vital undo button. Um, and it also presents an opportunity to learn a new form of art. So even if you're not experienced in like drawing or painting at all, um, this is like somewhat similar. It does have its differences, but it's still um, a legit form of art. And then there's also many, many uses. So whether you're doing it more casually or you wanna go into an industry, digital art is great for you. So, um, these are just like some of the available software. Um, so obviously this is the Procreate Workshop, so it's at the top um, because it's the most important. Um, <laughs> that's available on iPad. And I think there's an iPhone version that's like Procreate Pocket. It has like some assets, but not like all the assets, but it's still very good because I used to have it. Um, then you've got Clip Studio Paint available on both, Photoshop available on both, Paint Tool Sci and Krita available on the computer and then Metabang available on both. And then there's also many, many more, so. But today we will be focusing on Procreate. So I wanted to ask, does everyone have it like downloaded? Awesome. Okay, cool, sweet. I think so. Yes. So today what we're going to cover is setting up a canvas, how to do that and which ones to do based on whatever situation you're in, um, how to navigate the interface and like find some of the more um, complicated things to find, like where they are, because some of them are hidden away. Um, you're going to choose or you're going to learn how to choose which brushes to use and how to access and choose the colors you want to use. Um, some other um, tools, tips and tricks like shortcuts um, and then some other resources that are available. And then we're going to create a piece. So I think, yeah, that's all for now. So we're going to switch over to, let's see, where did we go? QuickTime Player. So I already have a canvas open, but I can show you. So when you first open the app, it's gonna look a little something like this. I have a lot of pieces already. Um, <laughs> yours probably won't, may or may not look like that, I'm not sure. But um, when you first open it up, you're gonna have your pieces right here and they'll come in like, I have mine in stacks and how you make a stack is like, if you have two or three pieces, um, you can like pick one up and then it'll like kind of like bounce like that. And then you just hold it and drop it on the other. And so then you have a little stack that you can put all of your pieces in. Sometimes it misses like that or like that. Sometimes you have to hold down and then it'll go into the piece. But yeah, um, let's see in the corner, you have these, what is the, there it is. You have these three little, or these four little um, like texts and icons. So select is just gonna allow you to like select multiple pieces at a time. And then you can like preview them, you can share them, you can duplicate or delete them, um, things like that. And then import is gonna allow you to go to your files on your iPad and like look for stuff. And you can import like, I think it's mostly like JPEGs or Procreate files that are already made, um, things like that. And then you can also use your own photos. So if you wanted to go like to your camera roll and stuff, but um, things like that. So now it's time to go to this little plus sign because that's going to be what brings us to the canvas. So um, yours will probably have like all the way from screen size to face paint. I just have a bunch of other untitled canvases. So like you can kind of see um, along the side, they hold on so you can actually see they list like um, how how long they are and stuff like that. Um, but for now, I'm going to show you how to make your own canvas. So 
when you open it up, it's going to be like this. Um, I usually just stick to the dimensions. I don't really understand like the color profile stuff because that gets like intense into like RGB and CMYK. Um, but typically RGB is going to have all of the things you need. So you can set the width and height in any form that you want. So whether you want pixels or millimeters, centimeters, inches, I typically use inches just because, yeah, I know it a little bit better. So let's say I wanted to make a portrait. So that's going to be about, um, I'd say like six by nine by six inches or so. So let's just say I make a little nine by six inch canvas. And so then the DPI, I usually keep it at 300 because that's going to be like your pixels per inch. And so the more pixels you have, um, the more, um, the higher quality it's going to be and the, the more like close together the pixels are going to be. So, um, hello, come on in. Um, oh yeah, no worries. We're just going over setting up your canvas and everything. Um, and then the maximum layers will change based on how big or small your canvas is. Um, so typically like the bigger it is, the smaller the maximum layer. So you can have like, you can get a canvas that's super, super big, but then have like 18 available layers. So it also all just depends on what like amount of layers you want to use. So yeah, so we can click create on our canvas or, and feel free to follow along or if you just want to watch for now, we're going to have like a play by play, like um, overview of how to make a piece and stuff like that, or at least like how, what my process is like. So, um, but first, any questions so far? Awesome, sweet. Okay, so um, right now I'm just gonna give like a basic overview of where everything is because you have like all of these icons along the top and it's like, where is everything? Where do I find the save button? There is not a save button, it saves automatically. So you're in luck, but um, <laughs> we're gonna get into it. So actually we're gonna start over on the right side with these little guys over here. So these are gonna be like your basic like brushes and stuff. Um, so uh, we'll go into more details about like which ones to use and everything, but like, here's where you can find them. When you open it up, it'll probably look something like this. You have like all of these like automatic ones. And then you can also download a bunch of um, like free ones or like downloadable ones, typically from like Gumroad or like Procreate's website. Um, so I can send a link to that later as well. Um, but here's where you're gonna find all your brushes. Um, you can like draw stuff like that. Um, next to it is the smudge tool. So this is kind of similar um, to the brushes and that has like the similar like setup and like stuff available. Um, same with the eraser, but um, super helpful to have like three different things and you can set them to different brushes. So it's like, if I wanted to have the flat brush for my drawing, but then blend with the, the acrylic brush and then erase with the round brush, then I could do that. So there's just stuff like that. This is where the layers are um, over on this side. Um, we will we will briefly get into like different layer modes and stuff, but that's mostly like more bent stuff. So that's where you have your layers. You can add them, you can swipe right and delete them, things like that. And then this is the color panel. So there are actually four or four, four or five different ways to choose your colors. So you have down here, you have the disc. Um, let's see, can't really see that right now, just a second. Yeah, so you have the disc. Um, this is like one way to choose your colors. You just kind of like go around like this and then around like this. Um, the classic is the one that I'm the most used to um, just because of like the way it toggles and things like that. So it's like got like less saturated to more saturated whites, blacks, things like that. Oops, I closed it. And then Harmony. This one is like a little more complicated, but also like you can you can choose like different whether you want like complementary colors or like I think it has like analogous colors and stuff like that as well and different like color schemes like that. So that's really fun. And then this is like the value. So if you wanted to get into like the RGB and HSS, HSB kind of stuff um, to choose your colors as well, you can also do that. And then if you have any palettes that you wanted to save, um, you can go over to the palettes tab and save them here. So I have some saved for like characters I have or like just colors I like and then want to remember, stuff like that. So that is this tab over here. It's pretty fairly self-explanatory. And also another thing is that 
if you move to your if you move to your brush or your smudge tool or your eraser, um, if you come over here, these are going to be where you this is going to be where you change the size of the brush. So it's like it's this size, and then I increase this, and then it's this size. And then um, same with like the opacity. So like the opacity is this right now. Um, this is going to move the opacity up and down. So it's like if I move it down to thirty eight percent, then it's going to be a lot lighter and more less opaque. So yeah, and then um, also if you want to color pick a color, um, you can either hold down with like just your pen, just like your hand or your stylus, and it, this will show up. Or if you wanted to do it a different way, um, you can click this little icon over here, and that'll allow you to um, this little eyedropper will show up, and you can color pick that way as well. So if you have other pieces or other colors in the piece that you want to use, and then. Um, on the other side, um, there's all these little icons and there's a lot of stuff hidden inside these icons. So um, one of these is that inside the wrench, you have all of these tabs. There's a lot of them. Um, it's pretty easy to navigate them once you get the hang of it. They're all pretty fairly organized, but um, like add is gonna have like all the stuff where you're like adding stuff to the canvas, obviously. So if you wanna insert a photo, take a photo, add text, um, or like copy and paste things, stuff like that. Um, that's where you're going to go for that. The canvas one has stuff that has to do with more like the actual canvas itself. So you can like resize the canvas. If you were like, oh, I don't actually need this big of a canvas, then you can go to like the settings and like, yeah, and you can like change the size like this. But I'm just going to leave this canvas how it is for now. Um, and then same with like same with like the drawing guide and page assist and animation assist. Those are going to be like actual things on the piece itself. So like if I had like this drawing guide and I'm like, okay, now I want to edit my drawing guide, um, then you can go to that. That's a little more advanced, but definitely good to know. And then the reference tab is one of my favorites. Um, this is going to allow you because you can either import the picture that you're referencing it directly to the canvas or you can have it more on the side so that it's less intrusive. And what's nice about this is that um, like when it's fully zoomed out like this, you can zoom in on the piece and draw things and then it'll show up like on the full canvas so you can see what the full thing looks like if you're like drawing a small detail or something like that. So if you're drawing like a super detailed eye, but then you zoom out and you can't see it at all, this is super good for that. But another thing that I find very helpful is adding references. Um, so if you go to the image tab, you can import an image and find one like directly in your camera roll. Um, so like if I wanted to draw this outfit, I could and, and use the reference without having to add it to my canvas and have it be like obtrusive. That's more of a me thing, but you can also add it to your canvas and just have it like on a separate layer. So yeah. And then moving on to share, this is pretty straightforward. You just have all of these different ways to share the image or the layers so typically if you're posting it to like instagram i recommend like a jpeg or a png um and then but if you like want to send a file to like a friend who's working on who's also working on appropriate you can export it as appropriate file because then all the layers will also go as appropriate file um same with for the psd that's for like photoshop and stuff i think i think clip studio paint and like some others can also um like take Photoshop or the PSD, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then what's cool about Procreate, what I really like is that there's like a time-lapse replay feature. So you can you can like kind of record like your process and like it'll just give like a super fast run through of everything. And you can either export it at the full length or like in a 30 second form. So sometimes I'll have like a piece that I spent like 14 hours on. So it gets condensed to like five minutes and I'm like, I want to post the video on my Instagram. So then I just export the 30 yeah. minute one and you do it like this. So that's how you do it. If you actually had enough time to, um, <laughs> or like enough fill time. Um, preferences is just going to have like some, like more like uh, accessibility stuff and like how you want the, how you want the canvas to look, how you want, whether you want like the interface on the right side or the left side, like depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed. I am right-handed. But I actually am using the left-handed interface just because I've always had it on. Um, so yeah, you can kind of do stuff like that. And then help. This is actually very helpful because what's in here is 
the appropriate handbook and the appropriate folio. So for the appropriate handbook, we go to this, um, it has a lot of different resources. So if you're confused about something that possibly wasn't covered in this lecture um, or in this workshop, you could go through here and like really get into the details, especially like about like options with layers and stuff with text because text gets into more like detailed stuff where you're working on like a vector thing, which is like different than working with pixels and stuff like that. And then another thing is the um, Procreate Folio. This is where you're gonna be able to see a bunch of other artists work. Let's see if it'll, yeah, there we go. Um, So they've got like featured stuff. They've got like popular, um, oh gosh, it's a little slow. But then you can also search for like free brushes and then in the discussion section that'll turn up and people people have posted like all of their all of their free brushes that you were able to download and that's why my canvas had like a bunch and a bunch of other <laughs> brush types because I was like oh free ones this is so much fun I did have to pay for some of them but it was very worth it but anyways um that's pretty much it for the little wrench which is like your your tools and stuff um this one adjustments is going to get kind of more into like um when you have a piece if you want to change like the hue and saturation or brightness like oh I want to make it a little more red or a little more purple or like a little brighter darker stuff like that and then it's got like all these other things that are like there for like you to like adjust your piece throughout or while you're working on it or when you finish and then the the selection tool is like if you you have a lot of different types of selections but if you want to like circle something and then you can like move it around you can like distort it in different ways and like edit the size and stuff like that that's what that does and then this little arrow also just kind of moves stuff around so you can use this with or without like the selection tool but yeah um that's pretty much a very fast basic run through of the interface does anyone have any questions so far cool awesome great so now we are so now i'm just gonna let you guys like have a few minutes to just kind of like peruse it kind of fool around experiment with some stuff try some out some of the brushes that are available for you there's a lot of random fun stuff but we will return in like two minutes two or three minutes we got a little time Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a lot different because there's not like a direct like yeah. color fill to it. So what um what I kind of learned is that like so let's say you have like an object, you have to make sure it's like fully filled in, especially because some of the brushes like have some distortion in them. But then what you do is like you yeah, you like hold down like this little icon and then like let's like select a color so you like you hold down this little icon okay I guess not <laughs> and you like hold it down really fast and then you drag it over and then you'll be able to fill it's like it's like not super obvious but it's definitely useful and also if you want to switch to like a previous color that you had then you just go on the color and you just hold down so then it'll be able to like switch back to the color you had before but yeah yeah I hope that was like good explanation but yeah Oh, yeah. Hey, welcome. <laughs> just going over the, we're just going over the interface and then we're going to start making a piece. So yeah, Um, the color picker, I think I did mention it, but I can mention it again. Yeah, no, it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, just a reminder, if you want to pick a color from the canvas, um, you can like, let's say you're like, oh man, I want to get this color. Basically, what you can either do is hold down on the color, and it, this little thing will show up, and the little eyedropper will just select the color. Or you can use this one and this little button. Wait, this little button over here. Yeah. All right. So, did everyone have time to kind of explore a little bit? tries out some brushes. Awesome. Okay. 
So are you guys ready to make a piece? You can make it alongside me or you can do your own thing. Um, but if you want, there is a Google Drive folder. Do you send it out? Okay. Yeah. Abby will send out the Google Drive folder. Oh my gosh, let's see. Um, but it's gonna have something like this in it. And this is kind of like what we're gonna go off of. I just kind of made like a little portrait rough draft thing. Um, it should be posted in the Discord in a couple seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you just click on it, it should download and then it'll like it might download to like your files, and then you can just go to like your files app and click on it again. And then it should import to your iPad. But if you have any questions with that, let me know. And we can just take some time to download that. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I can kind of show you guys, like, just like my starting process of how I, like, got to this point. Um, because like the way I kind of sketch, I have like, you can like find your own way of like sketching stuff out and then like building upon that. Personally, I just kind of start out like this where I like block out the shapes. So like if I were to, yeah, you kind of see, like I labeled all the layers for you guys so that you can like see what I'm doing. But, um, if I were to like start a new layer, I kind of, I kind of, so I, you can go down to the bottom and change the background color. So if you click on just like scroll all the way down. Um, it says background color at the bottom. I usually darken mine just a little bit, just depending on like the tone of the piece I'm working on. So if I wanted to make it darker or lighter, I could I could make it all sorts of fun colors, but I'm just gonna keep it right here. Um, because I like to I like to have like a little bit darker just to help me help me like get in the zone for like what kind of tone I'm gonna make for the piece. Like if I'm gonna use less saturated colors and more saturated colors, um the background changing the background color does help a bit. You can also just work on a white canvas if you so desire. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But um, so I'm going to just like go in with the round brush and I'm just going to find a color that's like slightly darker than the background. And I'm just going to start kind of like. OK, that one is opacity is low. That's why I was like, what is going on? Um, so I'm just going to start kind of going in and like blocking out a shape that like vaguely resembles a head. Um, for like the part where you're blocking out the sketch, it does not have to be like perfect or good because I find myself getting too caught up in like trying to make things look like absolutely perfect. So um, as long as it's just like the vague shape of a head, you've got the little ears, that looks a little goofy, but that's okay. Also a tip for undoing. So you have these little undo tabs over in this corner, but another thing I like to do is if you double tap or if you just tap with both your fingers, um, it'll just undo automatically, um, which is really nice for when you're working fast and you just want to like draw something really quick. So here I am just kind of, I kind of like shape things as I go. Um, like if I'm like, oh, I know this is going to be too wide of a head, then I just go in and I shape things and then I redraw things in and stuff like that. And then um, got the ears and then going with neck i've got like the neck like muscles i think they're like they're called like the trapeze trapezius muscles or something i don't remember <laughs> um i took anatomy in high school and like the most exciting thing was then the, i knew like the names of muscles for what i'm drawing but now it's been four years so i don't remember anything <laughs> but yeah i just kind of go in um use my little color drop ba bam <laughs> and and I just continue coloring and things like that. I, and then after that, I usually go in with the eraser. I think I have mine at the round brush right now. Um, and then I go in and start like shaping stuff. So I'm like, okay, I actually want to make this into like the shape of a head and like try and figure that out. And like, if you're like, I don't know what's going on, that's okay. Um, you can also look at like the one that I've already like done kind of. Um, if you need like just to get to that point um, but yeah oh gosh yeah does everyone have like the tools and supplies they need and stuff does anyone like I do not have an iPad with me right now oh gosh 
<laughs> Sorry, was that too scathing of a response for you? Or too scathing of a remark? Yeah, you're doing fine. Yeah. But yeah, and then once I get to a certain point, I start to switch to a darker color to start blocking in more of like the facial features where I'm like, okay, this is just like a strange like blob going into another blob. So I'm going to block very roughly block out like, oh, this is where the neck's going to start. And like, this is where I want the head to like be and where I want the head to stop and the ears to begin and stuff like that. Um, so obviously it's going to look, it, it can still look a little rough um, because this is just like this, again, this is just like a rough sketch kind of. It's just like a different way to sketch because then I usually do like another sketch on top of this to kind of like, finalize some of the shapes more but also you guys can just go for it with the sketch like with a little pencil just go for it if you really so desire because that is valid too and I did that for the longest time this this way just like somehow works better for me because I found like with sketching I would just get so caught up in like trying to make everything perfect the first time so but you do whatever makes you comfy um this is just kind of how I do it um so I'm gonna put in some collarbones I'm gonna add in some eyebrows and stuff what are you talking about me? No. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. There's eyebrows. Then we're gonna put a little nose in, just like a vague kind of resemblance of a nose. And then like maybe like the shape of like eyes. And you can just like continue to like refine it, add in like a mouth and things like that. So like that. <laughs> it looks a little goofy right now. Um, but then you can like even go back in and really start like vaguely shaping things a little bit more. Like, oh, I want the eyes to like be this size and stuff like that. And if you do find that you're like, wow, these this eye looks really big compared to like the rest of the face. Um, you can go in and then go to like the little like selection tool up there. Um, I'm just gonna oh wait, circle the eye real quickly, and then I'm just gonna like kind of change the size with the freeform selection and just like move it over a little bit. And then what I can do is I can just go back and recolor this in, or I can even just take the color by like swiping at it and then just bop it on over there. So then that'll help. Oh, and you have to. Make, I always tend to like put my wrist onto the screen, and then it like thinks that I'm undoing it. So that's something that I do. So if you see that happening a lot, my apologies. Um, and also if you keep doing that, no worries, it's okay. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> but yeah, so you can like keep refining it, keep going back in, and then eventually, I usually, um, once I get to a certain point that I like. So let's just say, I get to like this point. Um, then I can start kind of like, I guess I didn't really include like the sketching part, but then I can go over it more and I can even start moving in with like an actual like inking tool or sketching tool. So I typically with like the, the, like the preset brushes, I tend to go to the inking or the inking brushes, like even for the sketch and I just make them lighter. Um, so then I can draw over them. So for this one, I'm using dry ink. Um, feel free to explore any of these others because there's there's lots of fun ones. They have some cool fun ones. So now I'm just going to start. And also what's cool with a lot of the brushes is that like you can like turn your Apple Pencil on the side and like get like a cool effect like that. But then it's like when you draw with it, normally it looks like that. So um, there's some cool stuff you can do like mimics a, a actual pencil pretty well. Um, but then I'm just going to continue sketching stuff out like putting eyes in um maybe determining like fully where i want things to go and stuff like that is everyone doing well so far awesome so one thing that i noticed with this is that my these ears are looking a little large so i'm just going to go back in and kind of shrink them down a little bit so they look slightly more normal um 
but some people just have big ears so it's also okay i <laughs> it's also just fine to keep them like that size but sometimes i'm like wow i am really struggling to draw the other eye and the other eyebrow what's great about digital is that i'm just going to check to make sure okay i'm on my sketch layer so i'm going to rename this to sketch you can also rename layers which is really nice um basically what you're going to do is you're going to go to your layer tab and then click on whichever layer you're on and this little panel will show up so if you want to rename it you can select that um if you want to select copy or like fill the layer with a certain color if you want to clear the color completely um alpha lock we'll go into that a little bit later but that's a really helpful tool tool for like if you're coloring a piece of line art and you just want to color like one specific part but you don't want to go in with like a, a small brush just to do that um masks and clipping masks are useful for like shading and things like that um you've got the invert reference references will like if you want to put a photo into your canvas then you could set it to a reference layer and then you can't draw on that Canvas hello. hello come on in um and then you've got the merge down and combine down just like that yes oh yeah i can yeah i can like i can like show you like let's see okay so all right so i've got like this block sketch and let's say i wanted to um like make something that's like right on top of it so what i do is i just make another layer and then oh wait not that sorry that's like all of the blend modes and stuff we'll get into that a little bit um but if you do i just do like the clipping mask i'm not exactly sure how like the mask itself works yeah. but like the clipping mask is nice because then it's like okay if i have like if i want to go like pachow, 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 and like give this person some cool little like designs on their face i guess that's how you can do that um, alpha lock works in a kind of similar way, um, but I will get into that shortly. But yeah. I'm just going to keep working on this sketch a little bit. Oh, yeah, but if I wanted to, um, I'm like, oh, man, I am really struggling to draw the other eye. What can I do in this situation? You can take your little selection tool, um, select whichever part of the thing you want to recreate. Also, make sure you're on the right layer. You are. Okay, cool. Um, I will have to reselect it. Um, and then down over here, if you could see it, um, there's a little copy paste button. And this is going to copy and paste this, the part you selected onto a new layer. So then you, if you click on the little arrow, um, you can just select and move this like multiplied layer around, or like multiplied thing around. And it's on its own layer now. So, it, and it's going to say like from selection, just so you know, like, okay, this is my selected area and stuff like that. And then flip horizontal. Yeah, you can flip them horizontal. You can flip them vertical. You can rotate them 45 degrees. You can fit it to your canvas. <laughs> and then I'm not really sure what bilinear does. I guess it like kind of adjusts it to like, the nearest available object that's on the same layer. If I remember that correctly. Okay, I did not want to do that. But um, so yeah, then I can just kind of like go back to this, move this around. I am noticing that the eyes are a little uneven, so I can go back and correct that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually merge these two layers together. So how you do that is you can either um, select like the layer again, and click the merge down button. So that'll just put it like that. And then you're on the same level. So you can, yes. OK, yeah, we just have, so then, yeah, well, then we just have like them both on the same layer. And then if you want to do it a different way, you can also just like pinch your two fingers together while clicking on those two layers, and it'll combine them. And you can combine like as many as five, like you can combine as many layers as your hand can move across the canvas. But yes, did you have a question? Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Awesome. Yeah. So um. So the selection tool is up in the corner. This silly little thing is. I feel like a teacher. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to move it. It's in my way. Um. I'm like, I finally understand what you guys need. 
Um, but up here, there's a little like ribbon. That's going to be your selection tool. And you'll click on that and then draw a circle around whatever you want to select. There's also like a rectangle setting. So like if you wanted to like change it to like a rectangle and like select all of that, then it automatically fills in. But um, you can also just have it like a selection like that. Um, but I usually prefer the freehand one just because it's easier to use. And then you said copy and paste, right? Awesome. So there's this little button down here. Um, it's the copy and paste button. And that is, you click on that. Um, then a new layer from the selection shows up. So it's like, let's see. So if I like disable this, so you have this new layer and then you can also like, like it's like different. And did that, what's that like? Oh yeah, so um yeah, here I can make sure this is out of the way so you guys can really see. Sorry. Um yeah. Um so yeah, if you click the selection tool, um first it at this bar at the bottom is gonna show up and you can also like you have all these little presets at the bottom of like what you can how you can select and stuff like that. I usually just use use the freehand one. So I've selected it. And then after I do that, the copy and paste, which was previously like grayed out because you couldn't use it, then you can use it. So then you just copy and paste and then it'll be on the new layer. Yes. Action. Yes. Yeah. So and if you go to add and then open the copy, and that's <laughs> You want to have to do something on this certain canvas and go to that canvas. That's going to be where they will copy. Good. Definitely, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. A good tip. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna get rid of these. If you have any more questions, feel free to raise your hand, and I'll be happy to help. But I'm just gonna keep working at this. Um, I'm gonna go in and erase this one. This I and then kind of angle it more towards the camera. See what brush am I using? Switch back to my dry ink. So yeah. And what's nice is that you can kind of like build up the the line weight in like a more like casual way, like with these brushes. Um, so if you wanted to like, you know, like give your character like super high definition eyeliner or something like that, you have the tools available to do that. Um, and so I'm just going to go in and sketch a little more. The lips are always my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, I used to be very bad at drawing lips because I would always try to sketch them out fully, but then I'm like, if you just do this and then add a little shading underneath, it goes a long way. <laughs> oh, yeah. But then I'm going to just go in, define some of these shapes a little more. Maybe I'm going to like, hmm, I should probably start considering what kind of hairstyle I'm going to put on this character and like what clothes they're going to be wearing. So a great resource that I recommend is Pinterest. Pinterest has so many references. I actually saved a few, but I'm just going to kind of, free free like free draw the hair and whatever happens happens um but then i have an outfit that i actually saved um so that i could draw it so if i go to over to actions um and then canvas i can use my handy dandy little reference tab and you can also like shrink and and expand the size it's kind of hard to do honestly but it is there you can like move it around so if you would rather have the canvas the reference over here. Um, you can also do that. Um, but then I'm going to go to my images. I have saved this cute little outfit. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to draw this on her. So I usually use it just kind of like as a reference like this, where I'm like, OK, I'm just going to like block out the basic shapes. So we've got like the sweater. And then wearing the sweater but then also has like 
this kind of like jacket on a rib, this little flannel. Very cute, very cute. Again, does not have to be perfect at this stage because I usually just kind of like draw on top of everything eventually. Um, but work how you want. You'd rather like have everything look nice at this stage, go for it. Um, and if you'd rather work kind of like how, how I do, where it's like a little messy at first and then it gets refined, also go for it. So yeah. there's that. Then I'm going to move into the hair. So I usually like try and plan out where the hairline is going to be. Like even if it gets covered up, I'm like, okay, let me try to make not make her forehead too big, but also not make it too small. Have a nice little enough. And then I usually um, draw like the hairline. Sometimes I'll have it like a bit more uneven just to kind of like make the illusion a bit going backwards. Um, and then you can draw whatever hairstyle you want. Um, Pinterest is really good for like finding references if you're looking for like a specific hairstyle. Um, and then like also like Instagram and stuff. If you have like any homies or friends that you're like, yo, this is a cool hairstyle. You can just ask them, but then you can use their hair as a reference. <laughs> it's also good for like facial features and stuff. And um, I like to use it for like outfits and costumes and things like that. So. Awesome. There she is. She's got a little curly hair. Um, and then, oh, what happened? Okay. Another thing I like to do is I like to go into my layers and actually like, like disable the block sketch so that I can look at like what it looks like without the block sketch. And then I can go back and kind of like refine some of the details. Like, okay. It looks a little uneven over here, so I'm just going to even that out. Another thing, if you're like, I feel like this piece is a little uneven, but I don't know how to confirm if it is, there's a really helpful tool up in the corner. Um, so if you go to your actions um, and on the canvas page, which is like the second one in, um, there's flip horizontal and flip vertical. So this will flip the canvas um, completely. So this is always a good test because you're like, oh, man. Oh man, things are a little uneven. So then I can go back and like fix stuff. So it's like, okay, like I'm actually gonna show you guys one of my favorite tools, which is also sometimes a little challenging to learn at first because it's a lot. Um, but this is the distortion tool. So when you when you select like this object and then you go to the arrow, um, there's these four different little like transformation tools available. Um, so freeform is going to just like allow you to like go both horizontal and vertical in terms of your transformation. And then uniform is just going to keep everything the exact same. So this one is nice if you're like, okay, I want to keep this eye the same size, but I need to like, or I, I want to keep this eye the same like shape, but I want to change the size. That's what's super good for it. Um, distort is a little bit harder to use, but it's also a fun one because basically each of these is each of these corners over here is going to move on its own. So you can like do all sorts of funky stuff like this. It's really good for like perspective drawings. If you're like, I just want to draw the front of a house in like a normal front facing perspective, but then I'm going to turn it so that then it's in perspective. That's what this is super good for. And I also use it for like kind of like adjusting when things are just a little bit off and uneven. Um, so that's definitely something that's a definitely a useful tool. Warp is also pretty fun in that you can just kind of like do all sorts of wacky stuff with it because it kind of like turns it into like a pancake or like a flat piece of dough where it's like you can kind of like bend stuff over, you can like fold stuff over, you can like take the middle and just like blah, 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 stuff like that. <laughs> great, great. You never know when you're going to need it. The sound effects are also very useful. Um, Whenever you're like drawing and you're like, this is so difficult then just go like wah, 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 and you'll be fine anyways what thank you thank you that's what i'm here for <laughs> but yeah so now i can switch it back horizontal and hope it looks better okay i think it does it does look a little bit better um for time's sake i'm gonna keep um i'm gonna keep going so one of the things i like to do for coloring is that 
sometimes I will just take the block sketch and I will duplicate the layer. So how you do that is you're going to go to your layers and then you're going to go to the layer that you want to duplicate. And then you're going to swipe from right to left. And then these three little things will show up. So you've got lock, duplicate, and delete. Um, and lock, locking the layer will basically make it so that you can't draw on that layer anymore, which can be helpful if you're like, I don't want to, I don't want to accidentally do my sketch on the wrong layer, which I've done way too many times. Um, so that's definitely a useful tool. Um, but then we're going to click the duplicate button. And so then you're going to have two of the block sketch. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm actually going to change the name of this to base colors. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the color tab and um, I'm going to select this color and then I'm going to go into my color chart and you, you can choose whichever one you want. I'm going to choose this one, the um, the classic the classic one, because then I can move this around and have and choose a color that's like the same. Um, hold on a sec, wait. I'm trying to remember that's hue or saturation. Um, or like the same like color, yeah, like the saturation, um, but like difference in like, I think it's like, yeah, so it's like the grays. So it's like, um, is it along the, like the lines, like for the grays? So I'm using like the middle line um, because that'll keep it like in the same range um, in terms of like, if it was a grayscale piece, value, that's it, same value. <laughs> and you would come back. Yeah, so just for reference, like this one at the top is hue. Um, this is, I guess this one is also value, but then this one is gonna be like more saturation, yeah. Okay, you were right, my bad. <laughs> but yeah, so you can like mess around with the saturate or like, yeah, the saturation of the color. So I wanna find a nice skin tone that's gonna like match up with the saturation. Also, you can move around a little bit. Like it doesn't really matter all that much, um, but that's just like something I use to kind of help myself, like keep the saturations and values the same um, and in relationships. So I'm just gonna see how this looks. I'm like, okay, that's pretty good. It looks a little bright. So I will go back and then move back a little bit. And I'm like, okay, that's getting closer to what I want. Um, That looks closer. I might just go with this one because then you can always go back and change it later. So um, so it's like, awesome. Okay, cool. We have, that looks really saturated on the screen. It's a lot duller um, on my iPad. But, um, so yeah, and you can, what's also nice is that you can go back and like view past colors um, it only views them for like a couple, as you can see here, but like, it's super helpful if you're like, okay, I actually liked this color that I used like five colors ago. And so then you can just go back and select those and then try them again, just to see what you think. So I'm actually gonna go with this one, I think. Um, I just think it's nice. And what's nice is that like some of the shading from like the color block has already kind of showed up. So you can use that as kind of like, a base to like build on more shading upon that. So I'm gonna ma actually make another layer for the hair, just because I like I like to keep things a little bit more separate, um, just in case I'm like I actually don't like this hair color, so then I can change it without changing the rest. You can also like select just the hair if you do happen to keep it all in the same layer, and then just change it that way. I can also show that, but I'm gonna make one that says base colors hair. If I can spell correctly. So now. I'm gonna choose a random color. Any recommendations? Hey. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna choose a nice bright pink or dark pink. Dark pink. Dark pink. Okay. Yeah. This is this, maybe this would be good. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Got my round brush out. And um. Also, let me make sure. Yeah, so if you want to rearrange the order of the layers, um, what you can do is you just hold down on whichever layer you want to move, and it'll like kind of like move out a little bit, and that indicates that you're able to move it. So it's like, let let's say I wanted to move it like up here or down here. That's how you can do that. Oh no! And you can also make layered groups. Um, this is helpful if you have like multiple things going on in a piece. So you have like 
the environment in the background and then you have like the characters in the front and there's more characters in the back you can group them all together to keep them separate so that your your layers aren't like all over the place mine usually are <laughs> i just like i just prefer to have it that way but you can do whatever makes you most comfortable that is just one of the sources that is available for you to use i'm just going to go in and i'm going to color this hair all in another thing that you can do is you can outline like most of it um or like you can outline kind of like whatever area you're aiming to fill in and then that's when you can use the color drop and like drop the color in that you want the whole thing to be because then um that'll that'll save you a lot of time especially if you're working on like a more complex piece with a lot of different parts um there are certain brushes that are like built for that like there's like fill outline brushes that you can download and like most of most of the ones that automatically come on procreate like depending on the opacity levels of them you can you can pretty much use enough pressure in your like apple pencil or stylus to be able to like um i just fully lost my train of thought oh my gosh um yeah you can you can use like the pressure sensitivity to your advantage in order to fill things. Um, but yeah, so that was nice and easy. I just filled in all of that. Um, and then I'm going to also fill in her clothes. So I'm going to go back and reactivate my reference. It's still up. So that's cool. So I am a strong believer in like color, like, like eye dropping colors like this and then modifying them based on whatever piece you're working on. That's just how I kind of work. Um, I think it makes it easier um, and saves time and stuff. So I'm gonna try this color and I'm gonna see what I think of it. So I think it seems a little bright. So I'm gonna go in and darken it a bit and just find another color that's like similar. Oh no, <laughs> that's, that's an example of why you should make multiple, multiple layers. <laughs> I can do a base colors for the colors. So, yeah. I can just fill this in. Real fast. Awesome. There we go. And then I'm gonna go in and since she, since this is kind of like a plaid outfit for now, I'm just gonna take like a lighter color that's present in it so it's it's this is a very grainy picture so it's kind of hard to see here I can like put it more in frame but um I'm just going to try and find like a lighter color that's present within it so got this kind of like greenish gray color um and I'm just going to put that all throughout the jacket um because then when I go back to add more details I can really take time to like put in those um those finer details in the in the flannel itself. So I'm just gonna color drop there and color drop there. So um yeah, let me just I'm gonna color this in a little bit more. Always good to switch your layers. Don't forget. It's okay if you forget though, just I usually just press undo a million times or I'll just another thing that you can do. So let's say you're like, oh man, I put the hair on the wrong layer. Like here, I can show you like oh man, I totally, that line needs to be there, but I put it on the wrong layer. What you can do, a tip that I kind of figured out is you can like select this hair that's on the wrong layer and then copy and paste it and then go back into your layers. And like, I'd say I would just like undo this or like, like, um, you can also activate and like unactivate layers or like show or hide them with these little buttons along the side. So I just did that. You can't really tell. But then I'm going to go back to the base layer clothes where I put the wrong color and I'm just going to erase it. Oh, or I'm just going to color back over it again. <laughs> because then when I re when I re show this layer, it'll be there and I can merge it into that one. So that's how you can like kind of like save your mistakes and stuff if you have if you're like man I drew this really good eye except I drew it all in the wrong layer that's one thing I do to kind of um help with that so okay awesome so I have kind of this like very basic rough color outline um what I also want to do is I also want to add some eye color and some like 
color to the eyes, obviously. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like go over here. Most of my colors are in like the orange or reds or pinks and stuff. So I'm going to like come over to this side. And typically I just try to find like a gray or like a slightly, a gray that's like slightly into the color itself. Um, that is like light enough that it will signify that it's an eye, but dark enough that it won't be like glaringly obvious that I went back and colored it in. So this seems like a pretty good color. Um, and I can always go back and like refill in some of the shapes that I don't want there as much. So yeah, um, then I'm gonna choose eye color. Any recommendations? Any suggestions? Just yell out a random color. I'll go with it. What? Like brown. Brown? Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sweet. Let's see. Let's see how this one's going to work. I want it a little less saturated. So come over here. Awesome. Nice. So that'll be a good brown. But I'm like, wow, this kind of like light sketch is kind of really distracting comparing to the rest of the piece especially like in the eyebrows and the eyes I'm like I want to see if that color actually works so this is where alpha lock which I mentioned earlier is actually going to come very much in handy so I'm going to go over into my sketch and I'm going to duplicate this I usually tend to duplicate my layers if I'm going to like modify them severely just in case I'm like I don't actually like this I'm going to change it so then I can just delete that layer and go back to the original so we have this um sketch and this is going to become our kind of like main central sketch so i'm going to say i'm just going to title this like main sketch or like um i don't want to say line art it's not really line art but like closer to line art so i'm just gonna write that i tend to name my layers silly things because that can actually help so if you ever if you're ever like i don't know what to call this just name it silly. it's fine so i'm actually then gonna hide the sketch that's underneath it just for my sake um, and just to keep things more organized, but I'm gonna keep it just in case I don't end up not liking it. But next what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on the layer and then come down to this little thing called alpha lock. So you can't really see it super well, but there's like a little grid that comes up. It's like gray and black. And so that's gonna make it that anything outside that, those lines, you can't, color or draw on or anything. So it's kind of like a clipping mask in that sense. Yes. Whoa. Wait. Like on like the oh like this? Whoa. That's so cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's another tip. Um alpha lock is your buddy. Um either do it the long way um with words or just with three fingers to from right to left wait no left to right sorry my bad my bad I I promise I know my left one right <laughs> but then next I'm gonna go in with my round brush because I can use whatever size brush I want I can put it all the way up to 100% because then I'm gonna go find so I'm gonna get this gray actually and then I'm going to oh okay that works too <laughs> I'm going to darken it a ton I tend to keep mine like a little bit up from black just because black is like a very stark color, especially like on here. But I usually keep it like a little bit more into the browns or reds or something like that. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to go, whoa. And she becomes a lot more dark and clear. So you can also like, or the lines um, also become a lot more clear. So you can also like test with like lighter colors. It's like, okay, I don't want it to be like that stark, but I want it to be a bit more um, clear and stuff like that. Um, so I think this one's a good one because it's like it's like a nice brown. I might make I'm and then you can also go in and like make certain details a lot more um like more specific. So it's like I want the the her eyes to have a lot more um saturation in them and be a lot darker. And then I want like the shading over here to be a bit more darker, like the line art over here. Um, and then maybe like some parts of her hair. And this will just help like add some depth to the piece and stuff like that. Um so yeah, now um, I'm gonna start getting into the shading and stuff. Um, I'm just gonna show like a very basic process of how I shade and um, just how to utilize some of the tools that are available to you. So um, I'm gonna put this layer 
um, above the, the base color's hair. So I'm going to call this shading. And then I'm going to go back and select this color. And generally for, for shading and like lights and darks and stuff like that, um, dark, like the shading is going to be generally more like cool colors. And then the lights are going to be more like warm colors, I'd say. But you can also play with that. You can reverse it depending on whatever mood you're going for for your piece. You can have them all warm, all cool. Um, it's definitely up to you. But so I'm going to try and get like a little bit of a cooler piece or a cooler color for her hair. And I'm going to go in and just kind of start lightly. Um, maybe I'll shrink my brush. Maybe I'll even use the flat brush. So the flat brush is good for shading because especially with like hair and stuff, just because you can block stuff out a little bit better. Um, I like to use the round brush for like initial coloring, but um, you can kind of adjust and use with br whichever brushes you want. I kind of switch every so often, um, depending on what piece I'm making and just like what kind of mood I'm going for. So basically I'm just gonna go in and like increase or increase some of the shadows in some parts of her hair. And then I might be like, oh, I don't actually want that there. So then I can just go back and erase some of it because it is on a separate layer. Um, sometimes I will just put it all on one layer and hope for the best. Um, and then just go back and use like the original pink. Um, it's up to you how you would like to set up your workspace, but yeah. So like there's generally like darker colors towards like the roots of the hair. And then like, if you're drawing like curly hair, like within like the curl, it's gonna be darker. And then like when it's curving out, that's where the light shines on it. So that's just what I'm trying to emulate here in this very fast drawing yeah and then I might even go in with darker tones and be like okay now I'm gonna add some like really dark parts just to like really differentiate that um before I go in with the lighter colors that part looks a little wait okay mm -hmm. Oh, like blend modes and stuff? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> another thing that's really nice about um like digital art and like Procreate and stuff like that, it's available across like all um or most digital art like things is blend modes. Um so the two I use the most are gonna be multiply and add. So basically the science behind them or like the explanation behind them is like multiply is gonna like lessen the opacity but then like double the amount of the color so it's going to show up a lot darker than it actually is um if it were in normal mode and then um add mode is going to kind of do the opposite where it like makes it a lot brighter so i can actually show you that right now so um here we have like our uh our like hand done um shading but if you wanted to do it like like in a different way or just like a more convenient way um if you go over here if you see all these little like N letters, that is for like normal. So that's like the normal layer mode. But then if you click on that, you have all of these different options. And um a lot of a lot of them are like darken, color burn, darker color. Those are gonna be like similar to multiply, where it's just like it's multiplying the color on itself. And then um add is add lightning screen, those are color dodge, those are gonna be like the ones that are lightening um the color. So I'm gonna go over and go to multiply. So what happens is it becomes a lot darker, like yikes, <laughs> a little bit too much. I mean, she could do that with her hair if she really wanted to, but um, but then you can mess with the opacity. So by so by doing that, you go to the same thing that you went to, but instead of clicking on like one of these, you're gonna click on this and you're just going to edit like, let me just move this out of the way. And you can just lower or raise the opacity of that layer because that'll help a lot um, in like like making the shading more subtle or making it more um, like loud and present. And one thing I like to do is I actually like if I'm using multiply and add layers, I usually go in with a color that's different from like this base color or like even like its family. So I might actually go in with more like a purpley color and see how that does. And so I'm going to drag it over and see how that 
works and honestly it's not too much of a difference but i think it does make mine look a little bit better yeah so if you want to do your shading like that what's really nice is that the add layers are then very prevalent so if i go down to add um this one so i yeah i made another layer um hello welcome Hi. come on in yeah yeah no worries we're doing on time awesome yeah so um with lighting i usually make new layers for my add and multiply layers um i forgot to mention that earlier and another thing that you can do that's really nice for these is you can actually um use the clipping masks that we talked about earlier in them so like if i wanted to make them the multiply layer into a clipping mask then it like i don't know if you guys saw that but before it was like there was some shading that was like going over other parts and i may not want that um so then i just make it into a clipping mask and it's going to go right over the hair and only over the hair and so then i'm going to do the same thing with the add layers so i'm going to make it a clipping mask and it's just going to go right over the the hair and it's on add mode and I'm on the layer. So I'm going to select like a lighter color, um, depending on what you want to do. Typically, I use more like yellowy colors, like maybe something like this. And it's going to come out very bright at first, like, whoa, that's intense. But then you can kind of do the same thing you did earlier, where you lower the opacity and it makes it like more um, accessible and easy, easier to look at. And also matches more but like honestly like depending on whatever situation in, you, you might need like dramatic lighting like that that looks that is like something like this where it's like taking up half the hair or whatever and then it's like oh yeah um i typically use like more like yellowy colors so i just had like i had like a preset yellow I, I, that i just clicked on but you can kind of explore like i'm gonna test to see what would happen if i use like a more pink color um so yeah then it looks like that so then it's just like cotton candy okay <laughs> but yeah so there's that that's how you did that and then you can also i'm gonna lessen the opacity a little bit okay, yeah. there we go cool and let's see what else did i want to yeah and then i'm also going to do the same thing with the like the um yeah with like the the clothes and the hair and stuff or like clothes in the face and stuff um I can do the same thing where I can like have a multiply layer and for this one I'm just not I'm not gonna put it like in a clipping mask just because it's gonna be covering like all of this area and all of this area for easy for my sake I'm just gonna leave it like this um and I'll just make sure that it doesn't bleed into any of the other layers but I'm gonna kind of do the same thing where I'll find a color that was like similar to the one I used for the ad or the, for the multiply on the hair, which I think was like a purpley color. So I can actually go down here and select it um, since I had only done it a few colors ago. And then I can go in and like shade on the face. So it's like, it's like, whoa, this is bright or this is dark. So let me lessen that. There we go. But yeah, it's really nice because you can like make pieces as dark or as light as you need. And it can add really nice stuff, especially if you're doing like something at night or like something in like early day. Um, so then I'm just kind of adding shading in along the side. Normally with the face, I also like to kind of do like um, shading like that's just on like the base color layer or like shading that's like with the natural color that was just like appearing here. Um, and then like doing the doing like the multiply layer over it um but it honestly like depends on what you're doing and like how you want the piece to look so so yeah and then if i wanted to like have this all be a lot darker oh yeah this one is the flat brush it's like third one down in the painting tab or should be so yeah, I'm just going in, kind of blocking stuff out. This is a really good brush. I like did not know it was this good. <laughs> yeah, typically I just stick to the round brush, but I decided to try something new today. So, so yeah, it, and even like if I wanted to like go in and kind of like 
make this side of her face darker so that it kind of like illuminates the other side of the face. I could do something like that. Then I'm going to go in, add a new layer, um, change it to an add layer. I'm just going to already put down the opacity a little bit. And then I'm going to find the color that I was using before, which this one right here. Um, just like a nice little yellow. And then I'm going to go in on the face. And you can like, you can like press really lightly and it'll show up lighter. And then you can press like harder and it'll show up darker. So that's really nice for like, when you're doing that like variation in color and stuff like that. Um, those are really good tools for you to use. So I'm just gonna kind of color this whole area. And then I always kind of like to go back and like look at what it looks like without the multiply layers and then like see if it looks better without them or with them. And usually it looks better with them. Um, it does the like, it does, I'm still trying to master like how much to use and like when to use it and stuff like that. But usually a little bit can go a long way. Um, and you can you can have a lot of fun with like messing with the layers and like trying out some of the other stuff. One thing that I learned recently that's really fun. Um, this is actually with a different layer mode. Um, I'm gonna make its very own layer for it since it's like you have to use it like very sparingly. So this will be like layer 20, but um this will be, I'm going to change it to a color dodge layer and I'm going to lessen the opacity a considerable amount. And then I'm going to go in and like very lightly just kind of do some like lighting around the edge of like everywhere the light hits. Um, because then this will, this will create like a nice, um, shows up a lot better on my screen, but like creates a nice like shine or like reflection of the, um, of the color off the hair or like of the light off the hair. So yeah, it looks a little strange on this camera. Maybe it can mess with the opacity. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, I could go through those really quickly. So um wait, hold on, I gotta add, I gotta add some shading on the nose. <laughs> There we go. Add a little like light patch. That went that was a better plan in my head. Um, yeah, but I can just like move in like that. You can like go back and erase stuff and like change the shape of it and things like that. Um, but yeah, I can show you some of the um tools that are available for you if you want to like manipulate the piece, the piece, adjust it, stuff like that. So um that's gonna be over in this little magic wand tab up here. I don't know if you guys have ever used like Photoshop or anything like that, but it's gonna have like all of these options. So um, if I wanted to, let's say I wanted to go back and go in the color dodge layer and I'm like, hmm, I want this to be a little blurry because it's pretty like, it's pretty like hard edged on the side. Oops, sorry, I went to the wrong tab. One thing I can do is I can go to the Gaussian blur and this is gonna just like make things like a blot blurry. So you can like, you can like turn it up and down and see like, how blurry the things get. Um, I just want it up a little bit, but then it kind of like blends out pretty nicely like that. I don't know if you guys can see like a way here. I can like along the edge, you can like make things a lot blurrier or not blurry, more more sharper, sharper. Yeah. Um, <laughs> some other stuff we've got like motion blur. So if I wanted to, I wanted to like make it look like she's moving really fast, like vibrating at the speed of sound, I could like, shoo, it doesn't really show up that well, but like, yeah, just like phasing out of herself or whatever. Look at that. Um, And then like perspective blur is kind of similar where it's like you put, you put like the, this little dot somewhere and then you can like increase. Um, I'm actually I'm not sure how this one uses it. I think this one is better for like if you're doing like a background piece or something. Not entirely sure how that one works, but um, some other stuff is like, let's say you're like, oh, I actually don't want this to be like the base color of like her skin or something, or like even like her hair. Like I'm like maybe I want her hair to be a complete different color. So if you go to the hue, saturation, and brightness, um, it's the first one down, 
um you can kind of like mess with these it's like boom her hair is super dark wow it's really light um so that's like the brightness one and then it's like saturation make it super pink or like super gray or somewhere in between and then hue is going to kind of like manipulate the hue um of like the color so it's going to change from pink to like if you go this way it'll change like all the way to green and blues it typically matches up with like color complements but there is some variation um doesn't exactly fully line up with like whatever color you're looking at like i'm like this is green but the hue makes it look red <laughs> or like the hue says it's red so it doesn't fully match up i don't know what the reason is for that but um yeah those are also some tools that are available i think there's some more um there's also like liquify liquify is good for moving stuff around so it's like okay let's say um you can like increase the size and like I want to push this so I'm going to push her hair out a ton she's yeah and so then I can do stuff like that maybe it's like oh I put the eye in the wrong place but it's too far into the piece for me to really commit to going back and changing it in my sketch um so that's when I I'm like okay I'll just use the liquify tool so there's stuff like that and one last thing I wanted to show you guys is um like kind of what I do when I'm like, okay, I need to get rid of like this kind of messy sketch layer, but I don't want to like fully delete it. Cause if I fully like remove it, I won't have a lot of like the context that I want. Like, it's just going to look like this, which honestly could be a piece of art in its own, but I would prefer to keep like something like this. So what I like to do is I kind of just like to make a layer right above it. And then I kind of go in with like rounder br or like round brush or even like a more inking type tool. And I'm going to try and find colors that are like similar, but a little bit darker than like her face. And then I'm going to go in and kind of like draw right over it. And this is what I think is what people consider to be rendering. For the longest time, I thought rendering was just like fighting for your life drawing like under the line art and like trying to make your line art completely perfect um and I was always like how are these people's like rendering so good there's not even any lines and I'm like they're drawing on top of the lines that makes so much sense so to my knowledge that's what rendering actually is um if anyone has a better explanation please let me know but basics of digital art that I did not know until 2021 like <laughs> Oh yeah, no. Oh, I feel like that might have. Do you? Yeah. Really interesting. Oh yes, because there is a setting. Oh. Started out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Like my hand was Oh, really? It's just like, I'm just, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just basically going straight into the I don't know. Yeah, honestly. Hmm. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah wait yeah like when you double tap it it switches yeah oh yeah that is a setting i think i want to say let me look sorry guys you're gonna see like my wallpaper and stuff it's fine though um um but i think if you go like into your settings i'm pretty sure like there is like an apple pencil <laughs> if i can spell that would be wonderful yeah, so if you go into your Apple Pencil, um, yeah, <laughs> the settings, <laughs> um, you can uh, switch between the tool, print tool and eraser with a double tap, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, that's, that's a good tip for you people on Zoom as well. I, because I remember I definitely experienced the same problem, like, and I was like, what is going on? So I like, I, you said that and I was like, oh, I remember this happening to me, but I don't remember how to fix it. So I'm, I'm glad. Is it working now, Kay? Okay, awesome. Yay! Awesome. Mm -hmm.
Oh yeah. Is it like is it like over here, like in preferences? Or is it like oh. Yeah. Yeah, you can like really really go into it. So yeah, this is where like you customize stuff. Um that's where you can find like if you're like, oh, I don't actually want to like hold down to get another color. I just want to like, I don't know, like swipe up, then I guess you could do that. I'm not really sure, but <laughs> there are options available for you if you would like to change or edit the um the layers and or the shortcuts. Yes. Thank you. Um yeah. I'm just gonna keep rendering, but I think we're coming close to time. Yeah, it's 929. So um are there any other questions? Yes. Yeah, there's so many. Um honestly you can kind of use any if you prefer oh yes. Do you have an answer? Oh it's okay. Um you can kind of use any if you prefer like a blend a blend like it kind of depends on like what kind of blending style do you, you use. So do you prefer more like a kind of like clean, like fully like like it's like the it's like bronzer that's like fully blended into your face or like kind of just like a streak do you prefer like kind of like more blended in yeah. yeah so um i might recommend like the smudge some of like the smudge tools if you use like um you could kind of use any i prefer like more of like the rounder ones um for like blending really thoroughly um i can actually see how effective that would be um shrink this and also I kind of like going in with like different colors but yeah this one blends really nicely um if you're looking for more of like a thorough blend I kind of I kind of do more of like a block blocky style of blending so but yeah you can like kind of mess around with it and see um but Bella did you have other brush recommendations oh, no, no. oh did I are you sure okay okay yeah oh yeah I forgot about those. I forgot about those I use like the same four brushes all the time but then I have like tons of them downloaded so it's like uh, but um I'm using yeah I'm using like the smudge one like the blender tool yeah the blender tool Oh, this the little hand? Oh wait, you can't see it. Sorry, my bad. Oh yeah, I'm on the smudge. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> no, yeah. But yeah, the airbrushes are also really good. So like let me let me go find one. Yeah, you've got like the soft blends. If you want to do like some little blushies, um find like a nice really light one um and like go in add some that is too much um but yeah you can like add in some nice little blushies or like if you want to add in like very subtle shines um that's another good way to do them so yeah are there any other questions or last minute things i have <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I traced one one time. I could try and find it. I honestly don't know where it would be. Um, but we can go see. We can take a little tour of my gallery, I guess. Um, as I look for it, it might be in this one. Uh, oh yeah, I have, I have. So, um, I did the game jam last year with a huge group of my friends. So we made this game called Brat Cat. Um, or you basically had to play as this little cat and like escape or like you had to escape from your house so you could go to the frat so like these are some of the animations I made for it so like <laughs> you can animate it I this was the first like thing I'd ever made so I was like what is going on but here it is so he gets an invitation from Kappa Kappa Meow Meow um <laughs> so it kind of <laughs> yeah
So yeah, that was that. And then like I also animated like the ending scene, um, which honestly is some of my best work, I must say. <laughs> I really like how the house like shifts around. <laughs> That's just how hard they're partying at Capri Capri Meow Meow. Yeah, Bella Bella did the ending scene. I cannot do that. But yeah, so you can animate. It is very rough in terms of like whether you want it to be smooth or not. Like it's gonna be really rough. But like here, yeah, like these are like some of my more like rough sketches and stuff where it's just like there's just a lot going on. But yeah, you can animate. This is a little chaotic. But yes, you can. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. I saw that. But yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> um, yeah. That's all for me, I think. If anyone else has any questions. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I hope it was I hope it was comprehensible. I hope you could follow my line of thought because um much like my line of thought, navigating the app this app is pretty chaotic, but once you get the hang of it, you can navigate it well. You can do great things. I can't wait to see all that you guys create. Thank you for coming. Thank you, bye. Bye. Bye.